One of the most highly compelling questions in paleoanthropology is, where did Homo sapiens travel after leaving Africa? According to the predominant theory, our species originated in Africa more than 300,000 years ago, with a migration out of the continent 60,000 to 70,000 years ago, signaling the beginning of Homo sapiens global dominion. But after leaving Africa, where did these pioneers go? After years of debate, a new study has provided an answer. These bands of hunter-gatherers appear to have lingered for thousands of years as a homogeneous population in a geographic hub spanning Iran, southeast Iraq and northeast Saudi Arabia before spreading throughout Asia and Europe around 45,000 years ago, according to scientists. This is event referred to as the Arabian Standstill. Genetic, archaeological and climatic evidence all point to ancient humans living in and around the Arabian Peninsula. Their findings were based on genomic datasets derived from ancient DNA and modern gene pools, combined with paleoecological evidence indicating that this region would have been an ideal habitat around this time. The researchers referred to this region, which is part of the Persian Plateau, as a hub for these people, who may have numbered in the thousands before migrating millennia later to more distant locations. Iran has been the focus of archaeological investigations for decades when Paleolithic studies began. Excavations in caves have revealed a rich prehistory, including a variety of Paleolithic stone tool assemblages and faunal remains. However, the dispersal and adaptation of human species in Iran over the last 100,000 years is poorly understood. The Pebde Cave is located in southwest Iran, along the Zagros Mountains, which connect to the Mesopotamian plains further to the southwest. Aside from its strategic location along the Anbar Spid Strait, the cave itself is significant, measuring 110 meters long and up to 45 meters wide, about 360 by 150 feet. The region is one of the most densely populated with nomadic peoples who have lived there for a long time. Archaeologists conducted extensive excavations in Pebda Cave in the past. Unfortunately, the excavation results were not published, and the cave's significance was unknown until today. The Pebda Cave excavation is the first research expedition to focus on southwestern Iran and its late Pleistocene population. The first goal was to establish the layout of previous excavations, which was accomplished by opening one-by-one one meter test units in various areas of the cave. Approximately six tons of sediment were dry sieved and transferred from the cave to a nearby river for wet sieving. For the first time in Iranian Paleolithic archaeology, investigators also carried out sediment flotation, a technique to remove micro-organic materials from soils. As a result, micro-organic residues were collected for microscopic analysis. The team concentrated on excavating the cave terrace because it held the greatest potential for intact deposits. At the end of the excavations, a station had recorded approximately 700 objects, including stone tools and faunal remains. Wet sieving also yielded approximately 100 lithic artifacts and microfaunal remains, but some of the most important discoveries were stone artifacts. Scientists identified Middle Paleolithic tool types such as Levallois and Mousterian, as well as Upper Paleolithic blade-based tools. Samples were collected for chronometric dating, sedimentological and micromorphological studies, as well as sediment DNA analysis. The excavation's findings help us better understand late Pleistocene populations in the southern Zagros Mountains and their relationship to the larger Paleolithic world. Indeed, the findings provide the first comprehensive picture of the whereabouts of modern-day non-African ancestors during the early stages of Eurasia's colonization. Anthropologists describe the study as a story about us and our history, with the goal of unraveling some of the mysteries surrounding our evolution and global dispersal. The combination of genetic and paleoecological models allowed investigators to predict where early human populations first lived after leaving Africa. As stated, the researchers reported that these people lived in small, mobile, hunter-gatherer bands. The hub location provided a variety of ecological settings, ranging from forests to grasslands and savannas, with alternating periods of aridity and wetness. There would have been ample resources available, 
as evidenced by the hunting of wild gazelles, sheep and goats in southwest Iran. The diet would have consisted of edible plants and small to large sized game. Hunter-gatherer groups appeared to have lived a seasonal lifestyle, spending the cooler months in the lowlands and the warmer months in the Zagros Mountains. The people who lived in the hub at the time appeared to have dark skin and dark hair, similar to the Gumus or Anuak people who live in parts of East Africa today, specifically Western Ethiopia and South Sudan. This region of Africa today is made up of steppe grassland, savanna grasslands, and woodland savanna. The Blue Nile runs through this region and would provide a logical migration path out of Africa along the Nile to the Mediterranean and then into the Levant and Arabia. Nonetheless, the exact whereabouts and identity of the original African population are a mystery, because there are no known modern human fossils in Africa that date to the critical period between 120,000 and 40,000 years ago. Most scientists agree that modern humans originated in Africa more than 300,000 years ago, and that a massive human diaspora across much of the rest of the world occurred between 60,000 and 70,000 years ago. In a previous study published in the Proceedings of the National Academies of Sciences, scientists discovered dozens of distinct historical changes in the human genome, revealing a new chapter in the story. The study suggests that there was a previously unknown phase of humanity's Great Migration, a Arabian standstill lasting up to 30,000 years during which humans settled in and around the Arabian Peninsula. Before migrating to Eurasia and beyond, these humans gradually adapted to life in the colder climate of the region. What's more, cave art appeared as soon as people left the Arabian hub. As a result, these cultural achievements could have developed while in the hub, the researchers speculate. According to the researchers, their eventual dispersal in different directions beyond the hub formed the basis for genetic divergence between modern East Asians and Europeans. The study used both modern and ancient genomic data for European and Asian people, with a focus on the oldest genomes, which date back 45,000 to 35,000 years. Significantly, to pinpoint this region, the researchers devised a method for disentangling the extensive genetic mixing of populations that has occurred since the hub's dispersal. According to genetic analysis, prior to the pivotal migration, 60,000 to 70,000 years ago, Homo sapiens made smaller-scale excursions outside of Africa, but these appear to have mostly been dead ends. Of course, Homo sapiens was not the first human species to live outside of Africa, including the region surrounding the Arabian hub. Our species' ancient interbreeding has left a small Neanderthal contribution to the DNA of all modern non-Africans. Neanderthals are attested in the area before the arrival of Homo sapiens, so the Arabian hub may well have been where that interaction occurred. The Iranian cave is located approximately 500 miles south of Iraq's famous Neanderthal site, Shanidar Cave. During this period, the Neanderthals lived in increasingly small and isolated areas, suffering from what is now known as habitat loss and eventually vanished from the planet. Nevertheless, the Neanderthals were smart had massive brains, and were highly successful creatures. In fact, they had brains the size of the first Eurasian people and were very adept at utilizing local resources. They lacked the ability to broaden their perspectives and adapt to changing circumstances. Shanidar III, a 40 to 50 year old male dated to around 50,000 years ago, was discovered in the same grave as Shanidar I and II. Shanidar III's story is based on specific circumstances rather than large evolutionary forces, because there is quite a severe and deep cut to a rib on Shanidar III's left side. This cut would have been deep enough to collapse his lung, making Shanidar III the oldest known modern person who could have been murdered. The wound to the left ninth rib indicates that the individual died as a result of complications from a stab wound with a very sharp spear or javelin. Bone growth around the wound suggests that Shanidar III survived, for at least a few weeks after the injury, with the object still embedded. The angle of the wound rules out self-infliction, but it is consistent with a deliberate stabbing by another person. Recent research suggests that the injury could have been caused by a long-range projectile, of the type that only Homo sapiens were known to have used. 
This would be the earliest example of interpersonal or interspecific violence in the human fossil record, as well as the only one among Neanderthals. The presence of early modern humans armed with projectile weapons in southwestern Asia around the same time has been interpreted as evidence that this injury was caused by interspecies conflict. In summary, these adaptations left a lasting legacy. Since the first human genome was published, the amount of genomic data available has increased exponentially. These rapidly expanding datasets contain traces of significant events in human history. Researchers have been actively developing new techniques for locating those traces. When ancient humans left Africa and travelled around the world, they encountered new environments and challenges. New pressures would have caused adaptation and genetic changes. Modern humans would have inherited these changes. Previous genomic data analysis indicates that ancient humans most likely left Africa and spread across the globe between 60,000 and 70,000 years ago. Nonetheless, we still don't understand much about genetic adaptations during this critical period. Geneticists discovered that genetic selection likely played a role in the ancient human diaspora by studying both ancient and modern genomes. Using ancient human genomes, researchers can recover evidence of past events in which specific genetic variants were strongly favoured over others and spread throughout a population. These Hard-sweep events are surprisingly rare in modern human genomes, most likely due to subsequent population mixing that erased or distorted their traces. In fact, in previous research, researchers discovered 57 regions in the human genome where an initially uncommon beneficial genetic variant effectively replaced an older variant in ancient Eurasian populations. In study, scientists reconstructed the historical spread of these genetic variants while also estimating the temporal and geographical origins of the underlying selection pressures. Furthermore, they determined which gene in each hard-sweep region was most likely to have been selected. Knowing these genes has helped researchers understand the ancient pressures that may have influenced their selection. The findings suggest that early humans underwent extensive adaptation for up to 30,000 years before the large diaspora between 60,000 and 70,000 years ago. This period of adaptation was followed by rapid spread throughout Eurasia and as far as Australia. As mentioned, this is referred to as the Arabian Standstill. Genetic, archaeological and climatic evidence all point to ancient humans living in and around the Arabian Peninsula. The genetic adaptations involved parts of the genome related to fat storage, nerve development, skin physiology, and tiny hair-like fibers in our airways known as cilia. The report states that these adaptations bear striking functional similarities to those found in humans and other mammals living in the Arctic today. Researchers also discovered functional similarities with previously identified human adaptive genes, resulting from historical mixing with Neanderthals and Denisovans. These distant human relatives are also thought to have adapted to the cold Eurasian climate long ago. Overall, these changes appear to have been driven by adaptation to the cool and dry climates of prehistoric Arabia years ago. The changes would also have prepared ancient humans for the frigid Eurasian climates they would eventually face. As suggested in the study, Adaptive genes from the past may contribute to modern human susceptibility to various diseases. The findings add to a new but growing body of research, emphasizing the role of adaptation in shaping human history. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.